In a recent video, I had demonstrated this reefing hook that I had made. And I had promised that I would show you how I made it and for people to leave a comment if they wanted to see that done. Well, there was an overwhelming response from you all that you wanted to see how to make one. Well, that affords me the opportunity to make a few little design changes to this one. As this one, I kind of threw together mainly because I didn't know how well it was going to work. So today, we're going to make Reefing Hook 2.0. So what are reefing hooks and what are they used for? Well, primarily a reefing hook was used to clean out the caulking between two planks. Here are some examples of some old reefing hooks. This one looks like an old modified screwdriver. In fact, many people would use the end of a file tang and bend it so that it would make a hook to clean those joints out. Traditional reefing hooks looked like this picture that I found from the C. Drew catalog. C. Drew was a supplier of maritime wooden boat tools. Uh, they have long ago gone out of business. You can't commercially get reefing hooks anymore. You can, however, get them from a colleague of mine, Med Chandler, who runs Ship Koi Forge, and he's producing reefing hooks in the same style as the C. Drew ones and they are available on his website. So my version will have a handle much like some of these modern ones. So I've put together a drawing of some of the design changes that I want to make. So you can see here in the drawing there aren't a lot of major changes that I'm making. Uh, primarily when I made this one all I had was some one inch steel available and so I've purchased some one and a half inch steel so that it can go all the way through the handle as opposed to just going part way through the handle. Uh, I wanted it to be fat on the end so that when I got a hold of this that it's easy to pull as well as easy to push. So I've got some uh, one inch, or I'm sorry, I have some one and a half inch by one eighth inch steel here and I believe this is um, 1080 tool steel. Uh, so the other thing that I'll be doing is making some brass pins in there. I use some bronze here, and bronze is just a little bit harder than brass. So when you rub your finger across here, you can see when I sanded it, there's a little bit of a ridge there. So I have some uh, quarter inch brass rod here. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to add a lanyard hole down here so it'll be easy to hang up. Now, if the technique for this is very much in the same way that uh, knife making is done. So in knife making, this part is called the blade, this part is called the tang, and the wooden handle on here is called the scales. So in doing this, I'm going to refer to these parts as you would as if they was in knife making. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've made a photocopy of this, and I'm going to lay that out on the piece of steel and get it shaped.
Well, now that we've got the metal all shaped, we can do some heat treating. So I'm going to light my canola oil so that it can warm up to about 140 degrees. And then I'm going to warm the tip up uh, to beyond magnetic, so just a little bit beyond that, uh, and then quench it in the oil. But, but first, I'm going to uh, warm up the blade and put my tool touch on there. After the hardening of the steel, I cleaned the fire scale to better read the tempering color. I tempered the blade for two one-hour cycles at 400 degrees. Now that we have the tempering done, and we can tell that by this beautiful straw color that the steel gets. When I set it here next to the original one, it's really clear uh, how that color is in there. Uh, that indicates that it's been tempered to the proper temperature, and now we can uh, move on to finishing the steel. Now that we've got the metal all cleaned up and polished, we can turn our attention to the wooden scales. I had found this sort of gnarly piece of walnut here uh, that I thought would make for an interesting uh, handle on here. Uh, it's really got some interesting grain in here and it looks like it's been kind of um, compressed. So I'm gonna cut a section out of here and uh, use that for the handle. Well, after running it through the planer, that figuring really came out nice. So my next step is to put the metal on here and clamp it on there and then drill these holes. Well, we've let the epoxy cure overnight, and we'll see what we have here. It 
Well, it looks pretty good. Looks like we've got um, pretty much all the seams are coated well. So the uh, next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off uh, all the way around so that we're right down to the tang and clean off these metal pins and then we'll get ready to shape the handle. Now that I've got the uh, side profile and it all cleaned up, it, uh, it looks pretty good. So the next step that I'm going to do is to um, determine this um, top profile. And I'm going to do that over at the bandsaw. Now that I've got it all squared up and profiled nicely, I can now take it over and uh, take some hand rafts and start rounding it off. Well, it uh, works as good, if not better, than the first one. I'm really happy with it, the way it came out. I feel like it uh, even uh, actually fits in my hand just a little bit better. To finish it, I put a couple of coats of Danish oil on it and about three coats of uh, Carnauba wax. If you'd like to know more about how this tool is used, you can check out the video that is linked up above in the icon. So I want to thank you for watching, and remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.